So Helldivers 2 just got an insane new update along with the announcement of a new war bond, an explosive one at that. Everything seems like it's pretty exciting and these changes that came to the gameplay, if you're not hip to them already, there's a lot of them. So we're not going to waste any more time and we're going to get straight into it. So when it comes to patch 1.0002, this is actually a pretty major patch, probably the second to the first biggest one that we've ever gotten in this game so far and right off the rip we got new planetary hazard additions and i just have to say that these hazard additions are always really fun they make for a super dynamic experience and the ones that we got added this time are blizzards and sandstorms so that's going to be a definitely a really cool feeling on those desert planets and on those ice planets just a just more things to make it feel even more alive while you're playing so next the big obvious one is that the level cap has been increased to 150 and with that comes a bunch of new icons and a bunch of new titles so that's going to be extremely cool seeing people with different ranks you know we're not just always skull admiral anymore we're rising up into these ranks and not only that but there's a hundred new levels to go through so that's insane considering before the last level cap was literally 50 so the next thing we're talking about is balancing so there's a bunch of different balancing when it comes to this patch First off, the Retrieve Essential Personnel missions, they kind of move the, the spawn points. Fewer civilians are required to complete these missions. They're just making them easier because I think that they realize that they're the community's least favorite mission to do. So next, the Destroy Command Bunkers got a bit of a change. There's now more objective locations because before they were a bit too easy. You could kind of just run through the map and get them done in just a huge marathon. So the next is going to be the operation modifiers. They have the negative effect of the operation modifiers that increase stratagem cooldowns. You're not going to be waiting 20 minutes for your exosuit to come down or just like an extreme amount of time for any reason anymore. Now it's going to be a bit more reasonable since they've been cut in half. So next are the weapon changes, what I bet a lot of people are here to see. So the arc thrower, it got a pretty big change. I don't know if you would call this a buff or a nerf because they increased the stagger force, but at the same time, its distance got reduced from 50 to 35 meters and they fixed the charging inconsistency. So now it always takes one second to charge and you don't have to really worry about trying to play with it before you can get your shot off. The next is going to be the guard dog. It's now going to full restore ammo after you get a supply box. So not just part of its ammo, it's going to full restore it. Then the anti-material rifles next and they increased its damage by 30%. And this is a big one. I was actually testing this one out and you can definitely get a one tap to the head on some of these bigger automaton forces. So that's definitely a good thing there. Then the breaker incendiary, the damage per bullet has been increased by from 15 per bullet to 20 per bullet. This is a pretty okay change. It's going to do an overall a bit more damage. The liberator penetrator is now full auto. Thank goodness, because a non-full auto liberator penetrator is the main reason I didn't use it. So I'm excited to get back into the game and run this one. I haven't really tested this gun out yet. Next, the dominator's damage got increased from 200 to 300 and they increased the stagger. So the dominator just got an overall buff. Definitely good good to see. The Diligent Counter Sniper, they increased the armor penetration from light to medium, which is also pretty good considering it's a sniper, it kind of should have been this way anyway. So next, the Slugger. The Slugger got a huge nerf, I'm still not 100% sure why, but they reduced the stagger on it, they reduced the damage from 280 to 250, and they reduced the demolition force, and they fixed the armor tag in the menu, so now it says that it does medium armor, which I guess is a good thing but it's not really a change it's just essentially a visual change next is the recoil is rifle it's increased the number of rockets you restore from supply boxes from two to three the spear also has this same increase of one so it goes from one to two the heavy machine gun they also took the fire rate down from 1200 rpm to a more moderate 950 1200 rpm when you max it out it did start to shoot ridiculously fast very minigun like honestly i liked it this way but i can see why they would make this change so the next is going to be the stratagem. The Patriot exosuit is now, I guess you can say it's a bit nerfed, but they kind of just balanced it. The rockets just penetrate armor only on a direct hit now, so you can't just shoot the ground and just blow up all the armor. Also, the exosuit is going to be less vulnerable to explosive damage, which is definitely a pretty good thing because getting one tapped by rockets from across the map was never a good thing. However, I'm starting to realize now that the exosuit definitely thrives more against bugs because they can't, well, shoot back at you. So the next changes that they made involved the enemies. So they were just pretty much balancing adjustments. The charger's normal melee attack now does less damage against exosuits, which is definitely a good thing. The bile spewer and the nursing spewer do less damage with their spew. The Bile Titan can no longer be stunned, which is actually a pretty big deal, so hopefully this doesn't hurt too bad. Shriekers can no longer create bug breaches, which is great since they were flying enemies. And when Shriekers hit you after they're dead, 
it's going to do a lot less damage so it's not going to fly down and kill you once you've already killed it now they also did a bit of a change to the armor so the heavy and medium armor got upped in their amount of damage that they're going to protect you from so you're actually going to take 10 percent less damage now from heavy armor and five percent less damage from medium armor which i think is a pretty good change as well next to move on to the war bond and everything that we know is going to be in it so far so the war bond as a whole already looks really cool the entire concept of it being explosive already makes it so that you can tell this is going to be something that's going to be really fun to use against the automaton forces but just to get right into it the things that we know about it so far is that there is the br-14 adjunctor rifle it delivers a righteous judgment to your enemies with accuracy the armor penetrating assault rifle is the best used against smaller groups so this is going to be a nice little ar that they're going to add and the next one is going to be the eruptor rifle this one's going to be an explosive one so it says keep your distance this bolt action rifle fires jet assisted shells that explode shrapnel in all directions upon impact so this gun definitely seems like it's going to be very very good in a lot of different situations because not only is this going to be an explosive rifle it's actually going to be an explosive rifle that's a primary so this is probably going to feel really good to use but i guess you can only say once we've actually got our hands on it so the next thing is going to be the exploding crossbow and man does this thing look cool i don't really even need to read the description on this one because it's an exploding crossbow Next thing they showed us was a thermite grenade. This thermite grenade is going to be exactly what it sounds like. It's going to be able to stick to surfaces as well, so that's definitely going to be a plus. And I can really only see this thing being good, whether it be against bots or against bugs. It doesn't really matter. So the next thing, which is surprisingly something that I'm probably the most excited for, the pistol. So this pistol is going to be the grenade pistol. And I mean, it sounds exactly like what it is. It's a pistol that shoots grenades. It's going to be good for everything that you think it's going to be good for. You should probably run this when it comes out. So the booster for this war bond is going to be the extraction pilot booster. It's going to make extraction come faster. There's also three pieces of armor being introduced with this medium, light and heavy. I think we can kind of conclude that it definitely has something to do with being moved by explosions and explosions in general. That would make sense considering it's the democratic detonation war bond. But that's pretty much going to be it for the new Warbond and the update on Helldivers. If you guys are looking for more Helldivers updates and things like that, make sure you don't look any further and you just hit that, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. Thank you guys for joining.